Welcome to Highfalutin Low Carb, the random web series where we find and test the best low carb recipes this crazy internet has to offer. Today, we're tackling cookies, specifically low carb chocolate chip cookies. Stay tuned. All right, folks, low carb chocolate chip cookies. Can it be done? Well, if you're like me, you've probably made several recipes from online and other cookbooks, and they all seem to be variations of the exact same recipe. They take a traditional chocolate chip cookie recipe, they take out the wheat flour and put in almond flour or coconut flour or some combination of the two. They take out the sugar or brown sugar and substitute an alternative sweetener, sort of like erythritol or xylitol. They throw in some uh, sugar-free chocolate chips and you wind up with a shortbread with some chocolate chips thrown in it. You know, it's crumbly. It doesn't have that chewy, bendy texture and crispy edges that I love about a chocolate chip cookie. That's what it's missing. If I, if I wanted a shortbread cookie, I'd make a shortbread cookie. There's plenty of recipes for those. So I have chosen two recipes today that promise me that they are going to deliver on the chewiness and the crispiness that we're looking for. Now, the first of those, they're, they're actually both of these are, are, are recipe developers we have, we have made before on this channel. Uh, the first of those is nomnom.com, G-N-O-M-G-N-O-M.com. Her recipe is keto chocolate chip cookies, 1.5 grams net carb. And she's got two special ingredients that are supposed to deliver on that chew factor and that crunch factor. And um, we, I haven't made these, we're gonna find out together. And the second recipe is by KetoConnect.net, our good friends over there, Matt and Mega. And their recipe is almond flour chocolate chip cookies chewy. Uh, so they have a special secret ingredient in their recipe as well. So these two uh, we're going to try out here together and see if they deliver on the chewy, crispy chocolate chip cookie. Now before we begin, I need to give a huge thank you to Thrive Market for sponsoring this video. Thrive Market is an online marketplace that's on a mission to make healthy living easy and affordable for everybody. You can shop for thousands of best-selling organic foods and natural products that are up to 25 to 50% off traditional retail prices. And we're going to go over some of those products that I purchased for this specific recipe battle and talk about the prices there. Um, but what's great about it is you can filter all of those products by your dietary preferences and your values. For us, that's low-carb or keto products. But it could also be paleo, um, gluten-free, non-GMO, raw, vegan, whatever it is that you're looking for, you can filter that catalog by those recommendations, by, by those specifications. Um, and it's not just food either. It's, you know, supplements and home goods, children's products, kids' products, uh, just a huge variety of things. Now, like some of the big box discount stores, there is a membership fee. And what's nice about Thrive Market is for every membership they sell, they give one away, a membership away to uh, a low-income family, a veteran, a teacher, so that those people can also enjoy healthy food at, a, at an affordable price. And you're gonna find out in a minute what I mean by that. Now, I live in what some would say is a small city or a large town. There's over 200,000 people People in my metro area but even with that we don't have a Whole Foods we don't have a Costco we don't have an Aldi we don't have a Trader Joe's we don't have a Sprouts we don't have a fresh time so when I want to you know make these recipes or just cooking for myself and and some of the specialty items that we need for low carb living I have to go to like five or six stores to get those if they're even available so I usually wind up ordering online so Thrive Market um, makes this easy uh, it's free shipping for orders over $49 uh, and um, if you don't make up your savings of the membership fee uh, within the first year, they'll refund you the membership fee. That's how much they believe in, in what they're doing. So um, if you're new to Thrive Market, they have given me a link down here. Uh, you can go to thrivemarket.com, I believe it is, slash highfalutin low carb. And you get a, a free trial, free one month trial, and you get an extra 25% off of your first order, off of the already discounted prices for you to check it out. So uh, thank you Thrive Market for sponsoring this video. I appreciate it. All right, so let's get started on our first recipe. And this is Keto Chocolate Chip Cookies by NomNom.com. And if you've been on this channel any length of time, you know that I don't give exact measurements. Uh, these are not my recipes. I didn't create these. These are somebody else's hard work. We're just testing them. So I'm gonna send you down to uh, the video description below. There'll be links to all of these and here on the screen below uh, where you can find exact measurements uh, for all of these recipes. So please go check out these channels um, and their websites to get these exact recipes. Um, if you've been here, you know that. So, all right, we're going to sift this, right? <laughs> you know me and the sifter. So we already have coconut flour, 
and the almond flour in our sifter. And you know, I was gonna mention some prices from Thrive Market. Uh, the almond flour I was able to find here, I use Bob's Red Meal, that's the brand I prefer. Um, it was $13.29 on Amazon um, when I looked. It was 11, I'm gonna put some screenshots. It was 11.19 at my grocery store, my local grocery store. And Thrive Market had it for $8.99. So you can see um, there's quite a price difference there, but don't get on to me if the prices aren't exactly as I'm saying here. Prices are volatile. This is the price when I've shopped in September 2019 is when you're gonna view this. So if things are different in price, you know, that, that's understandable. So we're gonna sift this. This is our, oops, this is our um, almond flour and our coconut flour. To this, we are going to add some arrowroot powder. That's one of the ingredients that's gonna, she says, bring us this crispy and chewiness that we are seeking from this. And also, this is going to be xanthan gum, another one of those um, secret ingredients, uh, baking soda, and kosher salt, right? So let's just sift all of this together and get these lumps and bumps out of there. See that, you do not want that in your recipe. Get those out, push them through. And we're gonna set this, these dry ingredients to the side. If I don't make them too much of a mess. Too late. Get in there. All right, give this a quick whisk and make sure that's combined. We're gonna set that aside. Now, we're gonna turn our attention to the butter. And um, we've got uh, room temperature butter here in our mixer. And we're just gonna cream this for about eight minutes, I believe she said. Oh, we're gonna cream this for one to two minutes, um, just the butter, and then we're gonna add our sweetener, which is um, the Locanto, um, I have not tried Locanto before, the Locanto brand uh, Golden Sweetener. This is another thing that I got from Thrive Market. I was gonna buy this online on Amazon. Uh, the Locanto was $13.95 on Amazon, on Thrive Market, $8.79 pretty good price. So we'll add this to our butter after two minutes and then we're going to let this thing cream for 10 minutes total. That's the secret to her recipe. You've got to get this butter light and fluffy. So I'll meet you back here in about 10 minutes. All right, that's been two minutes. We're going to add in our sweetener now. This is the Locanto Golden. If you want to know how much, Check out our recipe down below. And we're gonna let this go for eight minutes and we're gonna keep, um, you know, knock it down with a, with a spatula every few minutes. So just so it all gets incorporated, okay? All right, so this has gone for 10 minutes total, two minutes uh, with uh, just the uh, butter by itself and then eight minutes with the sweetener and boy, it has really grown, it's huge. Now to this, we're gonna add um, a teaspoon of vanilla. Oh, I didn't open it. Come on now. Yeah. Oh Lord, there's a plastic one and a metal one. Okay, we need a teaspoon of vanilla and an egg. Crack it in a cup first. Save yourself some heartache, guys. Add our egg and let this run for just a minute or two until it's combined. And then we're gonna slowly add in our dry ingredients while the mixture is on low. So let this get, get moving. And now while this is on low, we're gonna add half of our dry ingredients, let it mix, and then add the other half. So carefully, don't throw this all over your kitchen. Now, we're gonna fold in our chocolate chips and she called for pecans, pecans is what I would say. <laughs> um, but she calls for pecans. I do not like nuts in my chocolate chip cookie. I just don't. So I'm optionally just not going to have that. So here's our Lily's chocolate chips. And, uh, you know, we were talking about prices. I also ordered this from Thrive Market. And Lily's, my local store does carry Lily's. I'll put a screenshot up here. When I went to the store, they were $7.49. Um, Thrive Market was $5.99. 
uh, per pack. And I know, I, you know, if you know me, I live in Florida and it's the middle of summer. I mean, it was 110 degrees the day I ordered these. So I was like, oh, I'm gonna get a bag of chocolate ganache when it arrives. No, it was like eco-friendly packaging, but came in like a cold pack inside the box with the other stuff. That's another thing about Thrive. All of their package, the whole company is carbon neutral from the packaging to the national shipping. And that even, they're certified even counting their employees commute into work every day, completely carbon neutral. So, you know, they're, it's something you can kind of feel good about. So fold in your chocolate chips and your pecans or whatever kind of nut you may be using. And from here, this goes in the fridge. And that's another one of her secrets to making this um, kind of chewy uh, and that crispy edge is you've got to chill this for an hour. And I know that's a pain in the butt because you're like, I want to eat my cookies. Well, you just have to simmer down for a minute. So scrape the bowl down, get this into a nice little compact ball. All right, so we're going to cover this in plastic wrap and in the fridge this goes for exactly one hour and we will be back here in just a minute and we're going to start on recipe number two it does not require refrigeration so i'll meet you back here in just a minute all right so now let's start on our second recipe and this is the recipe from ketoconnect.net and it's for almond flour chocolate chip cookies chewy now again all the recipes are down below in the video description as well as on the screen right here so we're going to begin this one much like our other one but it's a lot um, less um, fussy, I guess you could say. We're going to start with almond flour and again, sift. Almond flour, as you know, I keep, like I've said before, I keep mine in the, um, I keep mine in the, free, uh, the freezer because you know, nut flours have fat in them and they can kind of get rancid unless you bake regularly with them. So uh, I keep mine in the freezer. So we're going to sift this. Also our Sweetener. I'm going to use the same Locanto sweetener just to, since you know, it, it'll avoid um, differences in the recipe, so we can sort of be testing the way the sweetener works. Also, a little bit of baking powder. And here is their secret ingredient. This is uh, beef gelatin, <laughs> right? So this is what they're saying makes this chewy, like a chewy cookie. And um, the beef gelatin. You know, we were talking about Thrive Market. The beef gelatin, I wanted to get the one that they recommended, uh, the Great Lakes gelatin. It's um, pasture-fed beef and grass-fed and pasture-raised, uh, and it's a little pricey. Um, you could, they said you could also use just regular unflavored gelatin from the store, but I specifically wanted this because I'm going to try to make some of those gummy bears, gummy worms, you know, like um, uh, low-carb gummy worms. Anyway. Uh, the Great Lakes gelatin on Amazon, no story locally had it here for me, was $21.50. And Thrive Market had it for $16.99. So there's some savings to be had there, I gotta tell you. Um, so let's just sift this out and we'll be right back. Look at that. You would never get that out. A nightmare. All right, so we just sort of mix this together, make sure that's incorporated well, and set this aside and turn our attention to the wet ingredients. And this is going to be melted butter. They save some time here. Make sure you get it all out of there. They save some time. I guess you could say, you know, the other recipe, she was adamant that that thing needed to be whipped and you needed to aerate that butter for 10 minutes. Um, she was not joking. Gonna add the egg. and a little bit of vanilla. All right, whisk this good. Get the egg and the butter combined. Make sure your butter's cooled down a little bit. You know, don't, don't do it fresh out of the microwave when it's melted, because you're gonna scramble that egg if you do. And then in two batches, we're gonna mix this dry ingredients in. All right, now, boop, get off of there. Try not to sling it all over me. Get off of there. From here, we fold in our chocolate chips. Pull this together. And again, our Lily's chocolate chips. I love the Lily's brand. 
they are good. So, now this recipe does not call for it to be chilled. We're gonna go straight from here onto the pan and into a 350 degree oven. So I'm trying not to work this too much, but you do wanna get your chips kind of combined. So from here, let's get our pan. All right, so we're gonna line our pan with uh, parchment paper and um, nom nom dot, I have, I have some of the seal pats. In fact, I spent a small fortune on seal pats and was gonna use those. Um, nom nom dot com specifically said, do not use a seal pat because they will not spread. And to get the chewiness and the crispy edges, it's gotta spread. Um, now, Keto Connect didn't say that, but they did specifically say to line the page with, uh, line the, the um, uh, pan with parchment paper. And then I'm gonna take a portion scoop and we're gonna lay these down. You get, they asked to get 16 to 20 out of these. All right, so that's about as many as, we, you don't wanna get them too close. In fact, I may already have them too close because they're gonna spread out a little bit. So in these go into a 350 degree oven for how long should you say? 15, 15 minutes or until golden brown. And they gotta cool for at least 20 minutes <laughs> uh, before we can try them. So in they're going and I'll meet you back here in about 20 minutes. We still have a little bit to go before we put our chilled other recipe in the oven. So I'll meet you back here in just a bit. All right, guys, these are out of the oven and they look good. They're a little thick, a little taller than I thought they might be, um, but I didn't tamp them down. I didn't flatten them at all because that didn't call for it in the recipe. The, um, the, the nomnom.com did. So what I'm gonna do is these are gonna cool here. They have to cool for at least 20 minutes. They said, shoo, 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 those are hot. At least, and I'm tearing this apart, hold on. They have to cool for at least 20 minutes. Now, nah, yeah. Y'all, what's happening to me? They have to cool for at least 20 minutes before we can eat them and test them. But uh, the second batch, I have uh, tamped them down lightly with my fingers. We're gonna put these in the oven. And these took about 18 minutes instead of 15. I bet these might take a little bit less because they're flatter. We're gonna come back in just a minute. It'll be time to scoop the chilled ones and put those in the oven, okay? Okay guys, so the, uh, the rest of the cookies are in the back, the Keto Connect, they're cooling. Um, it it uh, specifically says that um, erythritol and sugar alcohol based baked goods, the cookies, they need to cool for a couple of hours before you taste them. So we're gonna do that. But we're ready now to scoop up our recipe from nomnom.com. This has been chilling for an hour, maybe an hour and 10 minutes or so. And we're gonna just scoop this out. It should be, wow, it's an interesting texture. It almost feels like ice cream. Um, and we're gonna put these on a tray. Again, you're gonna try to, she said you can make 12, um, 12 uh, giant cookies or 18 regular size cookies. And how long you cook them, of course, will obviously depend on what size you make them. And she also said uh, to flatten these out, if you like a thinner, crispier cookie, flatten them out somewhat. And I did uh, one with flattening and one without flattening on the Keto Connect, we're gonna try them. But so I'm gonna flatten these lightly. She said, once you have the dough shaped for these, um, you can freeze the dough and um, then bake them, add a couple of minutes to baking time. So you can just make a cookie or two. So you're not left with 18 cookies for Wesley to sit and eat, um, which is a concern. <laughs> so we're just gonna divvy these up. All right, so these are gonna go in the oven for nine to 11 minutes. She specifically said to turn the pan around 180 degrees halfway through. So I'm gonna scoop the rest of these out. I'm gonna flatten these down. Let's do that now. I'm gonna flatten these down uh, just slightly. I'm gonna um, cook these, and the next time you see me, we'll be testing all these guys, all right? So in the oven these go. I'll see you back here in five, four, three, two, one. Ha! All right, guys, we're back. It's been a couple of hours. I had to go run some errands and truth be told, get out of the house that had 36 chocolate chip cookies in it. Uh, but we're back and both of these look super good. I'm excited to try these out. Um, one of them looks a little bit more like a traditional chocolate chip cookie perhaps than the other, but we're gonna give them both a fair shake. All right, the first one here is by nomnom.com. These are the Keto Chocolate Chip Cookies. And if you make 18 cookies out of this recipe, one cookie has 149 calories, you got 13 grams of fat, 
you got 2.2 grams of protein. Total carbs, you got three grams. You got fiber is a gram and a half. So that gives you 1.5 grams of net carbs per cookie. Now the second recipe here, this is by KetoConnect.net. These are their almond flour chocolate chip cookies, chewy. These are the ones that had the, uh, the beef gelatin in them. If you make 16 cookies out of this recipe, one cookie is 130 calories. You've got five total carbs, 3.3 grams of fiber for a total of 1.7 grams of net carbs. You've got three grams of protein and 12 and a half grams of um, fat. So they look kind of different. I got to say, I'm super excited just by the looks of it. This looks more like the, you know, Nestle Toll House cookies that we, you know, all sort of know. But we're going to give them a both a fair shake. They've had time to cool. And you can see this guy here. He's kind of thin. And here's the test. It didn't really bend, but it does feel kind of chewy. It doesn't feel super cakey. Mmm. That's good. Mm-hmm. It's crispy on the bottom. There's, there's definitely a, you know, it's kind of firm. It's very delicate. It doesn't hold together as well as a traditional chocolate chip cookie, but I have no problems with that. I could eat that entire plate right now, easily. Hold on, I need some water. Okay, yeah, I gotta tell you, those, those are great. I haven't even tried the other ones yet. Um, I'm sure they're gonna be tasty too. All that needs is a glass of milk and you, I'd just go hide in the corner. You wouldn't see me for the rest of the day. <laughs> now these are the ketoconnect.net. These are the chocolate chip keto cookies, almond flour chocolate chip cookies, chewy. And their recipe did not say to flatten them down, but I did flatten some of them. These were just as they were made. And, and you know, you can see that they're, can you focus on that? Not my big fat head. They're kind of thick, right? They're, they're pillowy and thicker. If you knock them down, just tamp them down a little bit before you bake them, you know, they're more like a traditional cookie. They did not spread as far as the uh, Nom Nom cookies did to make them thinner, but let's see what they taste like. I'm going to test one of these against the thinner one of those. Hmm. There's also, can you hear that? Hmm. They're good. Okay. Both of those are very good for my personal taste by a long shot, it's the nomnom.com cookies. I don't know how, <coughs> they had similar amounts of sweetener in both recipes, and it's the same sweetener. It's that Locanto Golden, which is an erythritol-based blend that's um, mixed with monk fruit. Far less of the erythritol taste, for some reason, in Nom Nom's cookies. And if you remember, we whipped the devil out of that. You know, we creamed that butter and the sweetener for 10 minutes and we pumped that thing. It was like three times larger with all that air. Perhaps that's somehow worked those crystals of the erythritol. You know, they sat in there and ground up against butter for 10 minutes. And I, 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 I got to say, I feel like that must have dissolved the sugar somehow because these do not have the granulated grainy taste of the erythritol that I can definitely detect in these. Now, I'm not saying that these are bad at all, um, but if I were making these again, this took an hour of chilling, this took 10 minutes of whipping, and it had a couple of other fussy ingredients. Instead of gelatin, we used uh, arrowroot. Um, you can also use the konjac or cognac flour. Um, there's several things she gives you that you can use there, and the xanthan gum. So. For this one, I gotta give it to nomnom.com. Those are beautifully traditional chocolate chip cookies. So there you have it, folks. Low carb chocolate chip cookies. Apparently it can be done. 
I want to give another big thank you to Thrive Market for sponsoring this video. Without sponsorships, that's what keeps these channels alive and keeps things moving around here. So I really want to thank them. Um, if you want to try Thrive, if you want to try Thrive Market for yourself, be sure to use my link down below. It'll also be in the description below and in the comments below. It's thrivemarket.com slash highfalutin low carb. If you use that link, uh, Thrive Market is giving you, my viewers, 25% off your first order. That's off of the already low prices they've got, plus your first month for free uh, So of the membership. So be sure to check that out. Uh, most importantly, thank you guys. I say it every time. These videos are a way for me to maintain my low carb way of eating. And looking into that camera as often as I can helps keep me honest. So I appreciate that you have come along for the journey. Now, a little bit of housekeeping. Um, if you have been subscribed here, make sure that you are still subscribed. There's some shenanigans going on at YouTube if you're looking on other social media right now. Um, people are being unsubscribed from channels that they have been subscribed to and watch regularly. So if you're a subscriber, make sure you're still subscribed. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. Um, and if you are a subscriber, be sure you hit that bell button down below so you'll be notified just as soon as I release a new video. Um, if you want to be uh, check out my Patreon account, be sure to. Uh, if you don't know what Patreon is, it's Think of it as the tip jar for the internet. It lets people like you who enjoy people like me are doing here on YouTube and you can give us a dollar or two a month. It's patreon.com, you can check it out down there. Um, otherwise, uh, I'll be back in another, uh, with another recipe in a couple of weeks. Um, I got some changes coming to the channel. I know I tease that every time and I'm not ready to release the information yet. Uh, nothing that's gonna affect you, but it's definitely gonna affect me. Um, so anyway, I love you guys. I'll see you soon, bye-bye.